you know, there's one particular question that everyone is saying I should ask you before I continue my intro. Mm -hmm. They want me to ask you, what does PLO Patrick Lodge Otieno Lumumba? And are you related to... Um, mm. No, the, not the at all. Lumumba? I'm not related to Patrice Emery Lumumba. I think our only relationship is that uh, we share certain ideals, including the desire to have a united, peaceful and prosperous Africa. This year, the year 2020, was declared by the AU as the year of silencing the guns. And the whole idea of silencing the guns was informed by the realization that you cannot have any meaningful economic development, any meaningful political stability, any meaningful uh, social cohesion if people are fighting. And where are people fighting? People are fighting in the Sahelian region, you know, because it is in your neighborhood. People are fighting in Northern Mali, people are fighting in Mauritania, people are fighting in the Cameroons, people are fighting in Burkina Faso, northern part of it, people are fighting in Central African Republic, people are fighting in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo, there is conflict in Darfur, in Sudan and in the Nuba Mountains, there is conflict as we know in, uh, northern, uh, in northern Mozambique as we speak now and right just two weeks ago we now know that there is a conflict that has emerged in Ethiopia, the central government, federal government fighting Tigre and other things are beginning to happen in that area. I hold the view that Africa and a number of African countries must be renegotiated. And this is not incompatible with the unity of Africa. I remember John Garang de Mabior when he was fighting for the dignity and self-determination of the people of South and Southern Sudan. He told the Khartoum government, make unity attractive. Make us feel that we are equal citizens in Sudan, why do you want to make us Muslims? Why do you want to make us Arabs? Was God foolish to make us Dinkas and Nuers and to make us black? Isn't God a God of diversity? Can't we, in our diversity, live in one country with respect, he asked. And the same argument is the argument that the people are asking in the Cameroons, telling the BIA administration, can't we live in dignity? Why must we quarrel about languages that are not our own, French and English? And indeed, how many people speak French and English in Yaoundé or in, 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 other, in Boya? So I think that one of the most urgent things that must be done now is for countries to renegotiate. There is no one single formula. In Nigeria, we see, when you listen to Namdi, uh, Mazi, Namdi, Kanu, you hear the IPOB, you hear the Odudua Republic, even in Ghana now, you hear the former Togoland, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, we have so many of these uh, groups that are emerging. And let me tell you, the Europeans love it. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, one of the busiest airspaces in Africa, private jets lifting uranium, lifting gold, lifting coltan. And I think if I were ever to work at the African Union, they should only, in the two meetings, three meetings, meeting number one with only a single agenda item, we have recognized all the problems of Africa. We know them, they have been documented. Therefore, what should we do to solve those problems? The next meeting, agenda item number two, how should we do it? And the next meeting, within what time frame? And I would, in that context, convene a meeting that includes all the secessionist forces in Africa, all of them, all the rebel movements. You invite them and give them security so that they are able to explain to governments what they want. Let them tell us what is it, what is it, why can't we work? Because as long as we don't have peace and stability and security and we have insecurity and we have all these conflicts, we cannot grow. You cannot grow in an environment where there is insecurity. 
And of course, the other thing that you talked about is that uh, we must rethink our education system. We must rethink our education system. Your own countryman, uh, you know, Aikwe Iyama, at one time wrote a book, two books in fact, which I commend to young people. The beautiful ones are not yet born, and the healers. And in the healers, it, where are the healers? It is you who are going to be there. I have so much faith, perhaps too much faith, perhaps too much expectation for the younger generation. You know, one in every five Africans is a Nigerian by nationality. And I described it as the African heat. And SARS has gone underground, is in comatose, and the government thinks that it has solved the problem. No. That was a statement by young Nigerians that we are dissatisfied, that there are certain things that we want done. I hope that the administration in Nigeria will, in a very programmatic manner, begin to address those issues. And when I say the day Nigeria wakes up, if you have 250 million people, some of the most educated men and women in the world are Nigerians. There are more Nigerian doctors in the United States of America and the United Kingdom than there are in Nigeria. There are Nigerian engineers, there are Nigerian teachers, there are Nigerian business people. I mean, Nigeria is the engine. The Nigerian population is larger than the population of all ECOWAS countries combined. That tells you that if you make Nigeria great, it will be a magnet. And that is why I think Nigeria, deliberate effort must be made to make Nigeria stable. And Nigeria must also be renegotiated so that these tensions, I want the central administration to listen to what Namdi Kanu is saying. I want them to listen to what the Odudua is saying. I want them to listen to what the men are saying. Because when you have a conflict in your house with your children, what do you do? Do you beat them? You do stop talking to them? You call them at a table and you ask them, it is in our best interest that we retain this thing. But what is it that you don't like? And if you do that in humility, then you will listen to the people and restructure your country in a manner that makes it sustainable. It is doable. I remember those of you who are spiritually inclined on the day that God was creating man, there was a conversation he asked, and let us create man in our own man, in our own image. There was a conversation in the heavens. Why can't we have a conversation here on earth? We have African diaspora. <clears throat> Africans that were born in the diaspora, or Africans that were born here and then later moved to the West. Um, Doc, there is just something that I've been saying on my channel that it's time to make Africa home again. Yes. It's time for each and every African to know that Africa is home and it's time for us to come together and build Africa. Do you think that it's time for Africans on the continent to join hands with Africans in the diaspora to build the Africa that we are all looking for? It is already happening. You know, Africa, once Africa is inside of you, even when you are geographically not present in her, she is present in you. And I know the activities of quite a number of people in the Caribbean. Only yesterday I talked to somebody who was in Guyana, is a friend of mine, General Wallace, who is the ambassador of uh, Antigua and Barbuda in Nigeria, who is a great African. There is our sister, Arikana Chihombori Kwao. There is Rosenthal. There are so many people, Palacio in Belize, in uh, Latin America. So that there are 250 million plus people of African origin out there. And what I now see them doing, they are not relocating because they, those countries belong to them. They built them. That is Africa extended. That is exten that, those are extensions of Africa. So we are not just about to abandon them. But they know that the mothership is here. That is how I understood the year of return. And the year of return was simply, simply symbolic. And I would want to hear that year of return being 
emulated by many African countries so that the Africans who are uh, resident in Brazil can now trace their, uh, their origin to what is now called Angola, to Mozambique, to Guinea-Bissau, uh, to Gabon and all those countries. So I can't agree with you more. All of us in the diaspora, those in our kith and kin in the diaspora must combine to make mothership good again. And the African diaspora, my kith and kin, wherever you are, you must always recognize that the mothership is the continent and that you have an obligation which is divine to ensure that you work with us and we work with you so that the relationship is symbiotic with only one single aim to make Africa great again for this generation and generations yet to be born. In this struggle, your contribution is to do your very best because as I've said before and I repeat it here, the greatness of the forest starts with a single tree. The greatness of the ocean starts with a single drop. Be a good tree that the forest may thrive. Be a single good drop that the ocean may be great in its splendor. God bless you.